Franklin Sane is not a capitalist. And that's wild because I've read a lot of smart media outlets wonder if he is. Some folks say that he's a hero or a villain, but to me, Sane is something way worse. Homie is a corporatist. And this matters because while a capitalist can be a villain, a corporatist always is. And you need to know the difference because a lot of what folks say they hate about capitalism I hate it. I hate it. is really corporatism. And once you understand the difference between the two, you'll see that Snowfall ain't a show about what happens when you give a kid keys of drugs, but the story of what happens when you give corporatism the keys to the city. Snowfall is the story of Franklin Sane and his crew during the very real drug epidemic of the 80s. If you ain't seen it, what are you doing here? I don't know why the algo sent you here, but YouTube it, come back, we'll all be right here. But for those of you who have, let's keep it pushing. So no, Franklin Saint ain't a capitalist, or rather, he was only one for about an episode. That was quick. That's from the opening credits of the first show to this scene right here, when Franklin officially sells his first brick to Claudia. This is the moment that Franklin Saint became a corporatist, when he baptized his business in blood money and pulled back a corporation. But what's changed? Let's run it back, I got you, and we'll get some isms out of the way too. The first ism is capitalism, and a lot of y'all is using it wrong. You're doing it wrong. We could nerd out on the finer points, but a quick and dirty definition would say that it just means a free market where people trade and do business freely and the government doesn't get too involved. Initially, Franklin sold trees to provide for his family. He and his uncle sold a product on the free market largely outside of government involvement. They were capitalists and criminals. And if you're surprised that this can happen in America, then you must not have heard how we got all this land, huh? Everybody be cool, this is a robbery! Anyway, as capitalists, their business was able to split market share with the other dealers and peacefully coexist. It was a small business, and because of that, its footprint on the surrounding community wasn't toxic. And even if it was, it was too small of a company to make a difference. We know this because South Central is a way different city at the end of the series than it was at the beginning. The environmental change is drastic, and Franklin, the corporatist, couldn't care less because his corporation's profit has never been higher. But when they were a business, Sane and company were at least incentivized to care about the impact of their business on the community because they lived in it. As a corporation, you only care about bringing in more dough this quarter than the last. Let God sort them out. So Franklin sold the brick to Claudia, but she wasn't the first one he went to, was she, right? Nah, he went to Uncle Jerome first and he turned him down. And his reasoning is the real difference between capitalism and corporatism. He said no because the brick was too dangerous. Three pounds, you crazy man. That it would attract too much heat. Here Jerome is being a typical capitalist. He wants to get paid, but profit is not the only consideration. There are other things as valuable as profit, or at least heavy enough to weigh. But all money ain't good money is a concept that an OG in capitalism intuitively get, but corporatism can't. At the end of the day, a capitalist wants to be free, but a corporation can't suffer anything to be free around it. The forces of darkness control the world. But before we define corporatism, let's go back to what you probably didn't like about capitalism. Did it have to do with large corporations and big governments exchanging favors? What about billionaires with different rules than the rest of us? Or the destruction of the environment is your beef? Yeah. Well, if so, then we don't need to define corporatism because that's what it is, like all of it. And corporatism is the Pandora's box that Franklin opened in LA when he sold that first brick. And it's not the fact that they switched from trees to rocks that made them corporatists. That transformation had less to do with the what and more to do with the how and the why. Let's start with the why because that's way simpler. The why is greed. Blinded by their greed, they took them without question. To be clear, though Franklin is estranged from his dad, he's a middle class kid. He's this real rich kid and he like runs the show. He doesn't switch to rock out of necessity. He does it for money, power, and ambition, just like a corporatist. And his crew begins to devalue things like human life, empathy, and community, just like a corporation. And yeah, they donate to public works, but that's just for the image boost and PR. And corporations do that too. Jesus, you just tell me how much and I will write the check. And the greed led not only to a product switch, but also to a change in business model. And this led to an explosion in violence. With the trees, their business model called for protection and expansion of their market share. And they did it in relative peace. Someone gets upset, you say, chill out. With Rock, that model changed to expansion and domination. Once they created the game, they had to enforce their monopoly to maximize profits. And that friction caused a war. A war that changed the environment for the people of South Central profoundly. I mean, if this ain't environmental change, I don't know what is. And like I mentioned before, how they change is just as important as why. 
See, this is also when the Saint family started to scale up in numbers. At first, their crew was four to six members. At that level, there's a limit to the good an organization can do, but there's also a cap to the damage. But as the series progresses, the Saint organization becomes an international behemoth, with everything from street soldiers to high-level officials. But as the crew scales up, so does the footprint and impact of their bad corporate decisions. As a capitalist outfit, they could flood a street or two with product, but as corporatists, they destroy the whole city and the lives of the folks who live there. But a business can't get to that scale alone, and that's the other half of what makes this different from capitalism. Franklin only has that brick because of Avi, and Avi only had it to offer because of Teddy. And who does Teddy work for? The government. Later, Franklin and Teddy work hand in hand, and I can't think of a better analogy for the relationship of corporations and governments. I hate them all. Franklin is only able to scale up to such a toxic level because of the corruption and special favor of the government. Saint was only able to strong arm the market and flex because the government's profiteering gave him the supplements. I think he's on steroids. There is no unseen hand in the game because the winner was already chosen in secret. Even when the other dealers finally expand into rock, they know it's a monopolized sector, but they still don't know the full truth. I want the truth! That their free market is rigged and their biggest competitor has advantages that they just don't, like get out of jail free cards and no big contracts. Hey. Did you know that there's a word for when you think a whole system is run by lying ass <laughs> Yeah, it's kleptocracy. And if you feel that way, it's because your democracy has been stolen by kleptocrats and corporatists. Bastards. And Franklin and Teddy are good examples of what that looks like in action. Both are willing to sacrifice the prosperity of the few for their own goals. I've made sacrifices. And a kleptocrat like Teddy, those goals are political. And for a corporatist like Franklin, those goals are profit-based. Capitalists, business folk, freaking human beings have a lot of reasons for doing commerce. But for those two, those are the only things they care about. And this matters because if we glorify the core concepts of corporatism, internalize cutthroat kleptocracy, and let those concepts drive our community, then you can't be surprised when that community turns from South Central in 1983 to South Central in 1984. Thanks for watching the video. You can check out more content if you click that box right there. Make sure to like and subscribe.